Hey there, I've gotten a good response to the Finnegan's Wake video, so here's part two in which I look at the Finnegan's Wake movie. And I'm also going to address how I've been reading Finnegan's Wake, which has been basically uh, really kind of microdosing with it in the sense that, not that I'm using drugs while reading it, I'm saying that I am taking it in small doses because I think a lot of people want to like um, just plow into James Joyce and if you try that with Finnegan's and Wake or Ulysses, it's not going to go well. So instead I'm reading two pages a night or so, every night or whenever, and uh, right before bed. and. The thing is, this book is about dreaming. A lot of it pertains to dreams and the flimsiness of, of life in dreams. Because in Ulysses, there was this technique that Joyce employed called stream of consciousness or interior monologue, you might call it, in which it's, it's just words, like a flow of words that seem to approximate how a person is thinking. But I think Joyce was aware that this is not exactly how people think. People don't think in these streams of words. We have images, memories, uh, smells, um, sounds, music playing in our head. All these things are kind of interweaving. So I think Joyce kind of knew it was just a conceit of the, the form that he was using in the novel, that this was a technique he was going to go along with. But it's just kind of like, uh, you know, in theater, old plays, like Shakespeare, for example, sometimes the, the characters would do this long monologue in which they're, they're kind of talking to themselves, kind of talking to the audience. People don't really do that. They don't go off and talk for 14 lines, you know, about whatever they're concerned about. They just kind of ruminate on it in their heads. But we go along with Shakespeare or whoever that this is a possible or, you know, a plausible technique for unfolding a story. I think we get the same thing in Finnegan's Wake. Joyce knew that this is not how dreams really function, but dreams to me are interesting in that they are, they're, to me, they're the ultimate art form because they can transmit any experience. They can uh, have sights, sounds, smells, any memory, any tactile experience, anything can happen in a dream. You can read in a dream. But again, like Ulysses, we're given words instead of the actual experience. We're giving an approximation. So to do that, Joyce has created all these words and uses a lot of words that you kind of seem to understand, but kind of don't. It's kind of very dreamlike. You can't quite grasp and get who, who are the characters in this? What is the plot? These traditional elements of literature that with a little effort, usually you can suss out. It's going to be much more difficult in Finnegan's Wake. So maybe by reading this right before bed, I'll be able to translate it into a more dreamlike experience, or maybe not. But somebody got the idea, I think in 1966 is when this movie came out, to do this movie about Finnegan's Wake. I hesitate to call it an adaptation. Even though the title is Scenes from Finnegan's Wake, I don't feel like it was scenes from Finnegan's Wake. I feel like it was people running around, doing things in bars and wherever, at, at a funeral, and elements that are supposedly in Finnegan's Wake. But how much of this is actually scenes, that's what it's so hard to say. Maybe the director, I forget her name, was able to see these things and did tra try to translate that. But for me, it just feels more like doing wild things with, with actions, but everything else is just reading from Finnegan's Wake. They're just reading the lines. And it's, it's strange because maybe this is kind of dreamlike in the sense that, or when you hear a foreign language, it's like you kind of feel the edge of meaning, but it's very tricky. It's, it's, in that sense, it is dreamlike. But there's a famous scene in uh, Finnegan's Wake that is anthologized a lot because it's so short and it's more or less understandable that it's seem to be agreed that there's these washerwomen that are talking about Anna Olivia Pluribel, this main feminine character in the book. But instead of doing that, this director has chosen just to show some guy reading the line. The only thing I can say that I sort of walked away with from this movie was the, the universality of this story. 
as I try to find this story, I, I had the impression that this book is about me and my specific life. And it's easy to be narcissistic about that because I'm a YouTuber, but it's more that I think this book is about anyone, that universal aspect of that archetypal uh, kind of hero with a thousand faces mode. But I just told you it. So do you need to see this movie? I can't recommend it the way I did with the, like the Ulysses movies, helpful, not great movies. One of them's okay, but uh, helpful, no doubt, even the one I don't like. They give you a, an idea of what the characters might look like, not necessarily have to look like, and what they do and about where they're at. None of that in Finnegan's Wake, the movie. This this thing is just, uh, it just feels very art school. Actually, some of the techniques and the way the look, the film looked, seem ahead of 1966, and I applaud that, but can I connect it with Finnegan's Wake in any meaningful way? Maybe I'll be able to if I watch it after I read the book a lot more, but I don't think so, and I don't think it's going to help you in your journey into Finnegan's Wake. What did you think? Did you find it helpful at all if you watched it? If you didn't, don't worry, there are plenty of other resources, and we're going to start looking at them next video. <laughs>